You may agree that Christmas Eve is the most awaited day in a kid's life. John, too, had a special emotion attached to this festival. The eve was very special for him, not only because of the celebration, but for the fact that his mother, Sue, used to do something very weird that very day. Sue, John's mother, had a habit of disappearing on Christmas Eve. She would disappear for three hours and would come back without giving any explanation to anybody. This did not happen once or twice, but on every Christmas Eve, and when being asked, she would lie. That is how years passed by, and one day Sue gave up her soul in the early 70s. It seemed that the secret of Sue had gotten buried with her until a letter arrived from a stranger named Robert. John Dora loved Christmas like any other kid in his childhood. Why wouldn't he? After all, Christmas brings new clothes, new toys, and holidays. Everything appears to be so beautiful on that day. The whole of town covered with snow twinkles and decorative lights. No wonder Christmas is the most awaited day in kids' lives. And the best part is getting gifts from Santa. John had his childhood spent in Highland, Illinois with his mom, Sue. On Christmas Eve, John used to get up early in the morning looking for the gift and after that he would take a shower and would wear new clothes. His mom used to make special dishes on that day. He would eat them all and would go out to play with his friends. That is how he used to spend his Christmas. However, there was one thing that stuck out like a sore thumb. Every Christmas, his mother would disappear for a few hours without telling him. This had been going on since he was very small. It was not only him, but anyone, even in her friend circle, did not know where she used to go. This did not happen once or twice, but every Christmas. The little boy used to wonder where his mother goes and even asked her, but never got a true answer. Sue would always lie to him and he knew that. Eventually, he gave up and stopped asking her about it. He did not mind her disappearance as long as she would make it back in a few hours. John describes the weird behavior of his mother on that day of celebration. She would get up, do all of her chores, and after that would grab her keys and would drive off to a mysterious destiny. The boy would wonder where she was headed to every Christmas Eve. Once he did ask her about this mysterious venture of hers that she used to undertake, however, the woman did not give a satisfactory answer. She tried to evade it, saying she does shopping on that day. Shopping instead of celebrating Christmas with the family? John never bought it. John grew up to be a writer and a teacher. He indeed had made Sue proud of him. The man had excelled in his career of writing and teaching that gave him the opportunity to travel around the world. The man stayed in Mississippi and was employed in a school for 30 years. After that, he moved to Georgia and England. Currently, John is working as a consultant in the Gateway Writing Program, GWP, that is aided by the University of Missouri, St. Louis. His role requires him to travel to many schools in order to assist teachers and students in work pertaining to reading and writing. That is how John is making use of both passion and work. His work is a perfect combination of what he liked doing, i.e. teaching and writing. The GWP is the St. Louis branch of the National Writing Project. This educational body forms collaborations between teachers, educators, and schools so that students receive the best possible teaching in reading and writing. The GWP also provides consultants like John to aid students from all backgrounds. During his years as a teacher, John also wrote for Straight Up Magazine for nearly two years. The publication was all about music, art, and cultural news happening in Belleville, Illinois. The man had acquired many skills over the years, and the level of his creativity was only soaring day by day. John had a knack for writing, so he also came up with a project of his own. The project motivates people to write with more creativity. He even found a series of books named 99 Words. Interestingly, the story held 99 stories that happened to contain 99 words. No doubt the book can easily be called Lesson in Word Economy, the man explained in 2016 to the Sun-Herald. Moreover, teacher and writer John is very much celebrated in his field. The facilitator of the Carlinville Writers Guild, Robin Bullion, speaks highly of John. She calls him someone who manages to find humor in just about everything, and he's got a great imagination. Robin had a lot of positive things to say about John. She also mentioned John's remarkable series, 99 Words. The series received a lot of accolades from his friends and colleagues. She continues, He came up with some hilarious stories for 99 Words. Some of them are just absurd, but others are really poignant. 
we love him and we're really proud of him. John was very much passionate about writing, and his series of 99 words, along with other pieces, was a clear example of that. He very well remembers how his mother used to tell her stories that eventually encouraged him to write. He reminisces, I would take my mom on trips in the summer, and she would tell me stories, he added. I tried to record them, but the minute I pulled out a recorder, she'd clam up. Sue was an adorable woman with a very kind heart. She had many friends, but none of them had any inkling as to why she used to disappear every Christmas Eve. Even John's father was kept out of the secret, let alone other people. Even he remained unknown to this secret of hers. Though nobody had any idea about where she used to go, they all had made their own speculations. When John would ask his father, Dad, where's Mom? He would answer, I don't know, probably shopping. But somewhere deep down, his father and John knew that was not true. In the absence of any solid reason, John's father assumed that she used to go shopping to buy gifts. But each time, the woman would come home empty-handed, complaining that there was no good stuff in the market. It was strange. John knew that she used to get done with shopping days before Christmas. He said she gets her gifts done before Thanksgiving. She's finished. Notably, Sue would get out of the house at noon and would not come back until the evening. John said that his mother would disappear for at least three hours. However, no one in the house was as concerned as John was. His father and other family members considered this unannounced disappearance of hers some last-moment shopping panic. So the family was under this false impression that she used to go shopping on Christmas Eve. But John knew that this was not the case. Sue, too, knew that the doubts of her family were growing every year, but still she could not leave this weird habit of hers. Now John had grown old and so did his mother. The woman said goodbye to the world in her early 70s. However, the mystery behind her weird disappearance on Christmas Eve still remained unsolved. John assumed that the secret would remain a secret until a letter made its way to him. Not many days had passed since Sue's death when an unexpected letter came to John. The man thought it to be some business letter and did not give it much importance. However, he decided to open it up. It was from someone called Robert. The name did not ring any bell to John. He was soon going to find out the stunning reason why this man had decided to write to him. He learned that the man knew Sue. He happened to be her co-worker at the toilet seat factory. They used to work together. John wondered what he had to say about his mother. Was the letter about the secret that she had kept all her life? Indeed it was. He read. Robert's letter with these words, I just want you to know how much my family and I appreciate what your mother has done for us all these years. The man could not make anything out of this. He read further to find out more. The letter further read, Every year on Christmas Eve day, your mom comes to my house dressed like Mrs. Claus and gives a Christmas we can't afford to give them. So that is what his mother used to do every Christmas Eve. There was more to this revelation. Robert's letter further stated, She has given them shoes, shirts, jeans, toys, and candy. I know your heart is heavy and that you are missing Sue. We do too, he continued. We loved her and just wanted you to know what she has done for us. So now everything was clear like water. The woman used to disappear from her house only to become Mrs. Claus for Robert's children. She was indeed a woman with the kindest heart. Not many people go to this extent to keep their friends' children happy. She used to spend money from her pocket to buy gifts for his children. Now John was not only surprised, but proud too. John thanked the man for letting him know about the great deeds his mother used to do. He replied to Robert's letter, that short note was the best gift that I have ever received from anyone, better even than that silly old telescope. Robert had gotten so moved by his mother's actions that he decided to make a story out of it. He even gave a befitting title to his book, Mom's Secret Mission. He submitted his story to Chicken Soup for the Soul. This amazing series of books gives space to heart-touching stories. John, as mentioned above, was already a prolific writer. Prior to this story submission, he had already submitted six or seven pieces. In 2016, the man eventually gained an opportunity to get his work featured in Chicken Soup for the Soul, The Joy of Christmas. The editor-in-chief and publisher of the book, Amy Newmark, admitted that she loved reading John's submission. I loved his story, she remarked. I loved the fact that his mother went out to help this other family every Christmas Eve for years and never told her own family what she was doing. 
Amy went ahead describing the hardship involved in winning the competition. She clarified, It's a big deal to get in, she furthered. It's an important part of a freelance writer's resume. We know dozens of writers who have gotten book contracts because they have written for Chicken Soup for the Soul. It gives them credentials. As a reward, John was presented with a check worth $200. That was not it. He was also given the copies of the book that was a perfect reward for a teacher like John. And now the man is an official member of the Chicken Soup for the Soul family. He is positive that the organization would include more of his stories in the future. John's respect for his late mother has increased. Sue kept doing the gesture of generosity without blowing the trumpet about it. John explained, She just did it. It was part of her character, part of her spirit, and I think she was a great Santa Claus for me all year round.